Okay, great. Hi. <laughs> Sorry. My name is Anina Net, and we're Project 147. And I have a question for you regarding crowdfunding, because lots of people say, why don't you crowdfund it, etc. But when one has limited resources, today the days of, oh, I'll just do a Kickstarter are kind of gone, to be honest, because now you need to pay a PR company $10,000, and you need to have a social media plan, and actually Kickstarters from all the people that I've talked to are actually loss leaders because they have to, A, pay out so much to actually do the Kickstarter today. Otherwise, just in the sense of doing $1,200 in Facebook ads to get your Kickstarter going. So when making a decision when one has limited abilities, uh, and I have to choose, am I going to invest $10,000 in a Kickstarter or am I going to take that 10K and I'm going to do a, a first run of my product and just try to sell it uh, and get market feedback. What is your advice for, you know, analyzing these types of situations regarding one's resources? Mm -hmm. Well, very good point, and I agree with you that it's much more complex nowadays, and it's not, it's not a, a magic bullet, it's not just a magic answer. And I think the point you said about analyzing the different options, analyzing the situation, we have this limited resource, do we invest it here or there? That's what business is all about. That's what we need to do, and that's what I do with individual businesses as a consultant. We sit down and look at their options. When it comes to intellectual property, for example, do we register a trademark, which is not too expensive, but if we register a trademark, do we do it in one country or European-wide? You know, we, so we have to balance what is theoretically possible and what we can actually afford to do. That's the issue. That is right at the heart of business. That's what makes it so difficult, but also so exciting. You know, this is what it's all about. And similarly, when it comes to crowdfunding, I think we have to, you know, I'm certainly not saying, everybody, please, tomorrow, do a crowdfunding campaign. All I'm saying is be aware of it and explore it. And I've done the same. Because, as you see, I've written two books. I thought, wouldn't it be cool if the third book could be funded through crowdfunding? Nice idea, David. But then when I looked into it, you can't just put up, you know, a, a page. You have to at least do a video. And as you say, you have to get into PR and all the rest of it. And that's actually made me hold back. Because I also am a business, and I'm thinking, is this a priority? Is this the way forward? right now, maybe in the future. But I think crowdfunding also connects to other things, about building a tribe. And if you have already a following, it's much easier to get them involved. And I think I have a little bit of a following after all these years, so I, in that sense, I might have some advantage. I think it's extremely difficult if you're uh, starting, you don't have contacts, and because there's so much competition for crowdfunding, you know, it's very easy to just publish a page and nothing happens, even if you invest in a video and some PR. Similarly with electronic books, you know, it used to be only a few books were published. If you were lucky to be one of the authors, it was a, a seller's market. Now anybody can publish an e-book and it's easy to drown in the, you know, the, the vast ocean of millions of e-books. So how do you make yourself distinctive? So I'm not saying it's the easy answer, and I think you know, what you say is commendable. You need to look at it. You don't just jump in, you look at it, you assess it, and you decide, is it the right way for me? What are the priorities? What, are, what can we afford? And indeed, what is the opportunity cost? In other words, every pound or euro we spend on promoting the crowdfunding in the hope of raising money, is a euro we can't spend on making a prototype or speaking to a customer. So these judgments are all about business, and we, we should embrace this. You know, we, we can't just leave this to other people. We certainly shouldn't just follow the crowd, which is a danger. Everybody else is using Instagram, so I should use Instagram. Why? I'm not saying I'm for or against Instagram. I want to empower each individual creative entrepreneur 
to make a decision rationally for themselves. And when they say, I've decided not to use Facebook, not to use Instagram, or not to do a crowdfunding campaign because I respect that. It's too easy to, to tell other people what to do. And although I'm a business advisor, I often don't give advice because people come to me stressed and overburdened by the advice they've had from other people. The guy who says you should do crowdfunding, somebody else says you should use social media, somebody else says you should apply for European grant, somebody else says you should export to Poland, and all these ideas, you have to decide, and my job actually is to work with people like yourself and unburden you, help you examine these different options so that we can choose the best in order to um, yeah, to, to build, to focus on what is right for us. And as I said earlier, business is about saying no. It's not about trying to do everything. And if you rationally decide, crowdfunding is interesting, it works for some people, but right now, for me, it's not a priority. That's a rational decision, and I would support you all the way. And just one more thing about uh, crowdfunding. Some years ago, I spoke at a conference um, for the Ministry of Culture in Santiago de Chile, and I gave a talk about entrepreneurship, and one of the other speakers was the managing director or president of Indiegogo. And so I didn't steal his thunder, I just mentioned crowdfunding a bit, and obviously he said a lot more. But one point he made that I hadn't realized until then is that crowdfunding can be a really good way of market research, of testing the market. So I wrote a blog called Crowd Testing because it's a relatively inexpensive way to test the market. We have three ideas for amazing products. Well, we think they're amazing. Let's just see what the market says. And you, we're so sure they're going to love this product because it's our favorite. But nobody gives even a euro. But this product, which we think is okay, all of a sudden, we have a thousand advance orders. Wow. So it's a way of testing the market relatively inexpensively. Though I do take your point that nowadays, you can't just go in um, without investing something, certainly in time, and probably significant money as well, to run an effective crowdfunding campaign. So it's part of the landscape, something we should explore, it's not always the answer, and I certainly don't have simple answers um, or standard answers for everybody, because every business is different, and that's why you create your own unique business formula. And you have to be strong and stick to it. When everybody else is doing something else, we are social animals. We want to run with the crowd. And it's very difficult to say, they're all on Instagram, but I'm not. They're all doing crowdfunding, but it's not right for me. You have to be strong. So be strong and good luck.